Hi, I'm Matt from Hoboken Horology, and today I'd like to just go over my thoughts and impressions on the Met Moonwatch. <laughs> This Speedmaster is for the Met's um, 50th anniversary moon landing. Um, they basically did a pre-moon art, um, like how the moon was depicted in art. Um, they did the moon landing itself, some Apollo 11 photographs, some um, film reels from like Hasselblad cameras, and um, they set up like a TV, like a CRT with um, the Apollo 11 landing and Neil Armstrong coming out of the lander and, and Buzz Aldrin following him and everything like that. So this watch is for the Met. Um, it's the Met edition and it's actually not something we haven't seen before. It's the first Omega in space, first worn by Wally Shira, or Shira, I think it's Shira, on the Sigma 7. It is a 39.7 millimeter um, Speedmaster. Uh, it's a manual wind movement, which is a surprise to me because I thought it was an automatic because it's, it's the smaller one, but it's it's one of the the newer Speedmasters that is the same type of model as the blue one and the one with the red hand that's kind of has the, the, the pulsations on the tach tachometer. So this comes on a NATO strap and a leather strap. It has a special case back and it has the first Omega in space, the, uh, the, the different hand. It doesn't have the traditional Speedmaster hands. So I just wanted to go over this watch more so for my opinion on this watch. And I think that this watch is kind of controversial because people have been very div divisive over whether this watch is a good thing or a bad thing. Honestly, I don't think luxury watches should be offered on specifically offered on NATO straps. I believe in Omega NATO straps especially, and I think the watch looks fantastic, but because they offer a leather band with the watch as well as the NATO strap, I'm all for it. I think it's amazing. I don't like how Tudor in recent years has started offering some of their high-end luxury pieces on NATO straps instead of bracelets or bands. I think that's a little, I don't know, I, I, I have, a, I, that could be a whole nother video on NATO straps, the good and the ugly side. But this strap in particular, for some reason, when this came out, for some, somewhere I was told that it was limited to 100 pieces. I thought that that was somewhere I, before shooting this video, I'd done a lot of research to try to find where I had seen that misinformation that it was only 100 pieces. I have not been able to find that on the Met site or Omegas, which by the way, apparently you can only order this in, or get this in two places. It's the Met or the Omega Boutique on Fifth Ave, which I've been to both. Um, I actually saw this watch at the Met, at the exhibit, and the watch was in a display case next to t-shirts and books. It was a strange sight to say the least that a $5,000 plus dollar watch was sitting in a display case, almost unprotected, unguarded by by anything, it was just there. Um, and since the event was sponsored by Omega, I'm surprised there wasn't more of an emphasis on the Speedmaster. But I think that's one of the reasons that it's just sponsored by it. It allows the Met to have this exhibit and it doesn't have to look like an advertisement. So this watch in particular, I thought it was 100 pieces, I'm glad I didn't jump on one and buy one. As divisive as it is and as much as people kind of hate it and it's not really a really super original watch, um, because it's a limited edition and I don't know how many pieces there are, I couldn't find that number, but if there were 100 pieces and I was right in what I think is misinformation, then I think it's more it's it's a huge it's a huge steal. I think it's something that you should that somebody should buy because I think that between the Met case, the special case back, and it being so limited, people might hate it now. But you know, in a few years down the line, I think that it could be very very collectible. 
That being said, if since it's not a very limited edition, if you like the watch, I think that it should be something you go and pick up. Sure, I mean, I don't see any problem with it. I don't have any issue with it being sold at the Met. I think it's great that Omega sponsored the event. I don't understand why certain websites or certain watch reviewers hate on this watch so much for the fact that it's a limited edition. It's an event that Omega is sponsoring for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. I don't understand why that's a problem that there's a limited edition watch for that event. There's so many limited editions for so many other things that don't you know, necessarily make any sense. This is the one time where uh, I think Omega should get a huge pass and they don't by the community and uh, by people in general. It would be cool, I think in my eyes, that somebody who maybe has a lot of money or has a lot of expendable money or a tourist goes into the Met, sees the exhibit, they're very keen to notice the watches even though, like I said, they, they're barely on display. But they see the Omega, they know of it here and there and they buy it. I think that's great and I think that to get somebody interested in this like watch collecting thing and and because Omega is selling these straps with a NATO strap and a bracelet like Tudor used to do it's a really cool idea that I think that somebody going home who never thought you could even take a, a band or a bracelet off of a watch is going home and doing this and and becoming interested in buying NATO straps the $20 straps on Amazon the $10 straps and they're gonna put them on their watch and they're gonna enjoy this like watch collecting community and they're gonna look up NATO straps and they're gonna look up all these new things. So I, I honestly don't see a problem with this watch. I I think that I don't I think that I I can understand why people are dissatisfied or upset by it, but I, I don't see how you could because Omega has the history here and, and this is like their time, you know, this is their place. So that's just my opinions on it. I think it's a cool watch. I think it's a good buy. I think it's a little expensive, but you know, like I said, if it gets people into the watch collecting community and they're seeing the event at the Met, I think it's really interesting. So thank you for watching.